Hi, this is Shad Reyes. This is CBI 2019 Denver, Colorado. With me is Dr. Rahul Sharma. He is the Assistant Director of Structural Heart as well as Assistant Professor of Medicine at Virginia Tech Raleigh Clinic. Welcome, Rahul. Always a Thank pleasure you. to talk to you. Thank you. So you are presenting a few topics this meeting, but uh, I feel like the most highlight is going to be about the IDE early feasibility studies. Tell us more about it. Yeah, so I was asked to speak on future challenges and expectations for IDE studies here in the U.S., and it's a structural innovation session, so the talk is focused on structural heart devices and trials. Historically, as we know, here in the United States, uh, we have uh, found it challenging to have early feasibility studies for investigational devices up until about three, year, three years or so ago when the FDA started their EFS promotional program uh, to really attract companies to come to the U.S. and place their investigative devices and early feasibility studies here. Uh, traditionally, you know, these devices were more studied easily in Europe mm -hmm. and outside the U.S. So that has really caused just a, a burgeoning you know, growth of EFS and pivotal studies here in the U.S on investigated devices, and specifically to structural heart, whether it be devices for the aortic valve, mitral, tricuspid, uh, or LAA. So that has really kind of been at the crooks of this whole um, you know, change in paradigm and, and political uh, cultural change, which I think is bringing new therapies to our patients ultimately when these devices, if and when they get approved by the FDA, um, and giving us more options as, as physicians and operators to treat our patients no matter what their type of pathology. So I, that is, you know, from what has been published, that is the mission of the FDA. And both investigators and industry are working closely together to make that possible. So that the, you know, the, the overall topic is really talking about the natural progression of this here in the U.S. and also some of the expectations and challenges for future IDE studies uh, and what we as physicians, as scientists, as investigators want. Uh, from yeah. these early devices for our patients. So from, from the tone and from also from what you are telling me, there is definitely expanding indication for structural heart interventions. And as a structuralist you are, you feel like you need more options in your hands, right? Right. I mean, we're here at CVI 2019. This is the meeting for innovation, uh, as has been mentioned many times by our course directors. And so, you know, we're all eager and thirsty for it. We want innovative, companies, device leaders, investigators, physician leaders to bring their ideas forth and for those to be systematically studied in early feasibility right. studies here in the U.S. So, you know, it's crucial that we have the chance to do that and that ultimately if those devices are approved by the FDA and by uh, insurance payers such as CMS and others, that those devices could be used for the gambit of treating structural heart procedures. Now from all these new devices and stuff, the delivery or the vascular access has been always the focus. What do you think should be done or what is the things that you you envision going to change that vascular complication? Yeah, so, you know, in general, as, I mean, speaking specifically in the TAVR space, we've seen, you know, an iterative reduction in the vascular footprint of our TAVR sheaths and delivery systems. Um, and that trend will continue, I'm sure, as far as it can go, so as to allow the valve to safely pass into the patient's body. But um, what we want to see from an IDE study standpoint, specifically, I think, as a investigators and as a physician, we want to see that those early devices go through the initial research and development before they are put into an EFS study, yeah. where they're already at a minimal vascular footprint and where the device has already been iterated somewhat for safety and for ease yes. for the physician. One of the difficulties that we have is that in an EFS study, a device may be large footprint, transapical, something that's not you know, practical, practical commercially. Yeah. And then after it's proven that EFS study, it has to be studied in another EFS study when, or, or potentially a larger EFS study where you know, the device or the delivery system has gone through some iteration for transeptal or smaller vascular access right. footprint. So you know, I think it's important for um, industry leaders and for physician scientists that are promoting these innovations to try and make that device as tight as possible from a practicality standpoint before putting it into an EFS study. Study so that, you know, yes, we, we, we may still need to iterate the device as it goes through EFS safety analysis, but we want to make it the most practical up front. Yeah. Um, and so that's, you know, that is both an expectation and a challenge, frankly, for those who are putting these devices into early studies. But do you think by your expediting, as you said, um, acceptance process into the market, but do you think that can also can be a cheese hole to uh, getting uh, devices into probably is not ready yet to be implanted in patients? 
in, uh, approved into market? Yeah, no, I think, you know, based on publications by the FDA and others, there's still a very rigorous expectation that these devices be studied in large pivotal studies. Many of those pivotal studies have comparator arms where the device is compared to a control arm or to an in current commercial industry standard device. And I think that those expectations are still good. In fact, in my uh, uh, talk tomorrow on this subject, I, I'll have some provocative um, you know, points about how maybe this can be changed. But pivotal studies, I think, allow us to sort of vet and sanitize some of these questions that you're raising about uh, minimizing you know, the likelihood of a, of a cheese, cheese hole or Swiss cheese effect yeah. where a device could get through but maybe has not been assessed uh, right. for safety. Probably. That, that should not happen with the current system that we have. Um, but at the same time, I think it's also important not to uh, belabor the investigation more than it should be. Um, and that's, I think, some of the, you know, where the, some of the expectations come in from a physician and operator standpoint. Yeah. You know, if a device is taking five, ten years to get through the system, by then, you know, the pace of the of the market has moved, you know, so, Way faster, so much faster. With different and, and then potentially applicability of the device is called into question. So there is a happy medium, I think, between preventing, you know, premature adoption, which I don't think would happen with our current system. We have a lot of safety checks in place based on what's been put forth by the FDA. But at the same time, uh, we also want the expectation that things can be studied expeditiously so that they can be given to us in somewhat real time for the current problems, you know, that our patients are facing today. Well, that seems a very steamy discussion tomorrow and great talk. And I think it was a difficult talk was assigned to you. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Rahul, for talking to us and for teaching us a lot about all the FDA and um, uh, early feasibility studies. Uh, please watch this video and others on CVI YouTube channel. This is Shad Reyes. Uh, this is uh, uh, Denver, Colorado. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man. That was great.